Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the website server that's built into Maverick server. Now one of the advantages of hosting a server is to be able to host your own websites. And uh, as you take a look at that, there's a few things to consider. Uh, again, as a home user, uh, you might find that the built-in website that's already built into OS X server is enough for you. Uh, you may not want to customize that. Let me just show you kind of generally what that looks like. Uh, I've turned on the website service just so that we can take a look at the uh, basic website. You can see down here it says View Server Website. If I just click on that, uh, you can see that it launches kind of a, a basic website here uh, that allows you to access Profile Manager, uh, Xcode if you use it, your settings, uh, where people can change their passwords and things, and then the wiki, uh, which I'm going to cover in a future screencast. And you might find that the wiki is plenty uh, for you uh, to use in a home environment. You know, kind of gives you the ability to collaborate, to kind of build uh, your own pages. And so that might be enough. And I wanted to show that to you just to kind of show you that that's there. Um, but let me just uh, let me just put this down here, uh, just in case. Now, if you still want to host your own website, maybe you've been playing with uh, software packages like Rapid Weaver, or maybe you've got an old iWeb site that you want to host yourself now, since Apple's kind of uh, shut down the hosting. Um, there's a few things you want to consider again as a home user. First of all, you just want to consider downtime. Understand that when your server goes down, your website goes down as well. And so if you rely on your website for business or selling things or anything like that, uh, you might not want to host it uh, at home on your own uh, web server. Now, if you've got your Mac Mini in a hosted environment, uh, like it may be Mac Stadium or a place like that uh, where it's always on, uh, that, would, that would be fine. That's a great use for that, uh, to host it on the outside. But when you're hosting it at home, those are, you want to consider that down, downtime factor because that's all on your shoulders. Uh, the other thing you want to consider is does your ISP block port 80 or port 443, which are two typical ports that are used for websites. Uh, port 80 is the non-secure um, port, and port 443 is the SSL port. That's the secure port. And so if your ISP blocks those because they don't want uh, their users hosting websites, then you won't be able to host a website. And so you want to consider that uh, yourself. Uh, the other thing is just, do you have a static IP? Uh, if you don't have a static IP address, you've got a dynamic one that changes all the time. Uh, when your IP address changes, your website goes down until you get that updated. And so that's something to consider uh, as well. So I just kind of wanted to go over all that just so that you uh, kind of knew some of the implications. Now, if you look at the website service here, you'll notice right away uh, we've got uh, a server website here, uh, both on port 80 and port 443. Now this is that default website that I just showed you uh, that goes to your domain. So when, in my case, when I type in server.toddoltoff.com, uh, those websites uh, are what come up, the one that I just showed you. And so those are the default ones. Now one of the things that I've kind of seen is you don't want to delete these, you want to keep these, uh, or it might cause a little bit of instability uh, in, your, uh, in your server. Um, just with some of the background stuff. So just leave those alone. Don't delete those. That's your default website stuff uh, that runs a number of different services. So you just want to uh, leave those things on there. Now you'll notice in the settings, pretty simple and, and up front here, uh, you can enable PHP web applications or Python web applications, and that's if you've got some websites with some uh, dynamic things in them that use PHP or Python, you want to enable that here uh, so that uh, the Apache server in the back is all set up for that. Uh, so that's right on there. Uh, the other thing is, is let me just give you a little bit of a, a quick tour of what this looks like. I'm going to just double click on uh, this website. And I'll just walk you through these, and then what I'll do is show you how you can set up your own website yourself. So uh, on here, it asks you where you want to store your folder uh, files for your website. Right now, it's on default. Uh, and see, there's a drop-down. You could put other if you want to. Uh, if you just click this little arrow here, uh, it brings up a finder window that shows you where those are located. And so you can see that right now, it's located in the Sites folder. You can see down here, Library, Server, Web, Data, Sites, and then Default. And then these are all the default uh, files that are in there that come up when we launch the website. So when I launched the website before, it's pulling from these files right here to display that website. You can see all the different HTML files there. Let me just pop this down. 
Now, we can also set up who can access the server. Uh, you can set it up to be anyone, uh, or you can actually set it for a particular work group. And what that means is that before they would even get into your server, a little drop-down window comes down where they have to put in their username and password to even view the site in the first place. So if you'd like an added level of security, you don't want people just to see the uh, splash page like I just showed you there when I pulled up the website, you can actually set uh, security on here by groups to say which groups can actually access it, and it will require that username and password. So that is one way to add security to it. Uh, you, have, you can have additional domains on here, and if I just click Edit, you can add domains uh, that would be in here, so alternate domain names. So maybe you want it to be you know, home.example.com, and you also want it to be kitchen.example, whatever you want to put in there. Uh, you can have additional domain names in here that will just sort of uh, you know, be added to the list uh, for that particular website that you've got set up. You can also set up redirects, which is kind of the, the same kind of idea. If you've got a website out there that maybe you have with your domain registrar, that's not doing anything, you've got the domain, you can have a redirect that if people hit that, it'll redirect it to whatever website that you're hosting. So you can set that up. And then you can also set up aliases, and this is where you put in, again, kitchen or home or whatever aliases you want to be redirected uh, to your server. Now, you also have index files in here that you can edit, and so these are the various index files that show up for this default site. Uh, most of your sites will just have your index uh, index.html, or if you're using PHP, it'll have that. Uh, you don't necessarily need all of this uh, in here, uh, though this is kind of what it defaults to, so you can go ahead and customize that if you want. You can also add other index files as well if you want to do that, um, but uh, for now, we're just going to leave that alone because this is the default site, so I don't want to change that. And then you can also edit advanced settings. And so when I click on this, I can enable server-side uh, includes. Again, these are some advanced things you probably don't need too much as a home user. Uh, you can allow overrides for uh, HT access files. And so if you've got a site that has uh, special login uh, access on it um, that's kind of built into that uh, particular site that you created on RapidWeaver, maybe you've got you know, a particular lockdown area of your site, you want to make sure you enable that. Uh, you can uh, allow folder listing if you want to, where you have that show up there. Uh, you know, just the various, um, you know, uh, advanced settings that you can put in here depending on how your website func functions. Uh, and then you can make these uh, web apps available on the website. You can have the P uh, Python Hello app and all that kind of stuff. And so you can enable that on there as well. Again, these are more advanced settings, but depending on your website, you may have to come in here and adjust a few things. Let me just click Cancel. So that gives you a tour uh, kind of of just the settings that are in there. Let me show you now how you might set up your own website uh, using uh, the setup here. So let's say I want to set up a website that's, uh, you know, cloud.toddletoff.com. Okay, so it's not a name that I have registered out there, but I, I want to use it internally because I want to create an internal website, let's say, for my family. So what I would do is the first thing I need to do is I need to set up the DNS for that to work. So we're going to go over here to DNS. And what I've done is I've already set this up, but what you would do is create a primary zone for cloud.toddletuff.com. Then you create a machine record with your www in front of it, and then that would automatically create the name server as well. So in here, if I just double click on it, you put cloud.example.com, uh, you know, whatever your website is right there, whatever your zone is. Okay. And then in here for the machine record, you just put the www, and then I point the IP address back to my local IP, because I just want this to be a local uh, website. So that's why I put that on there. I'm just going to click Cancel. And so you can build these out for various websites that you want to build, because uh, the nice thing about Maverick Server is it can host uh, multiple websites. Now in here, I need to actually add uh, that website. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to type in the domain name. So it's going to be www.cloud com, And you can see the green light here means that it is a, a domain that's available. Uh, in other words, I've got the DNS set up properly. It's going to work for me. If there's red on there, that means you've got probably got a problem with the DNS side of things. You need to go in and make sure those records are right. So I've got that set up. Uh, IAP address, I'm just going to say any uh, as opposed to just saying this. I could put it right on this as well if I wanted to. I'm just going to leave it alone. Uh, it's a port 80. I just want it to be a general website. If I wanted to, I could protect it with an SSL, my SSL certificate, which would require login. That would also change this port to 443. Uh, I don't care about login for, for our purposes here. Now, I can say where I want to store the files in. So I could actually create my own folder, or I can allow a server to create a folder for me. And it's basically just going to create a folder with this name on it where I would put my files. So I'm, I'm just going to let it create the folder. Uh, now, on this, I can, again, go through the additional domains, redirects, aliases, and all of that. I'm going to kind of just leave that alone. Uh, there's no advanced settings I need, so I'm just going to click Create. 
And so now what server is going to do is actually create uh, this particular site. And you can see my website's right there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click on this to come in and see all my settings. Again, if I wanted to lock it down, I could do that too by certain work groups, but I, I don't care. It's just in my local network. Uh, now, right here, it shows me where the files are stored. It's stored in this folder. If I click the little arrow, it will take me to the folder. And what server does is automatically adds all this stuff in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this information here, and I'm just going to delete it. And it's going to ask me to authenticate, so let me do that. Okay, once I've authenticated, just click OK. And so now it's going to delete all that and empty it for me. Now what I did is happen to create an HTML uh, file in TextEdit, just a real simple thing. I drop it in there. It wants me to authenticate again, so I've got to do that all over again. Okay, and click Enter. And now my folder has been added, right? It's just a simple HTML uh, file that says this is a website, okay? Something like that. So now that's all set up. I've got, and so whatever you created your web files with, those files you would export into here, okay? You put all those files in that folder. I'm going to pop that down. Just going to say uh, cancel here because I didn't change anything. Now what we need to do is just test it out. So I'm going to pull up a web page here like I had before. And I'm going to put in www.cloud.toddoltoff.com. And there is my HTML. This is a website test. That's the actual file that I put in that folder so I know that my website is working. So that kind of gives you an idea of how, uh, how you would set that up and set up your own website in your own, um, you know, your own home environment. If you wanted to set it up on the outside, you'd have to come into your host here and go through creating uh, you know, records for, uh, for your actual website so that your domain provider can point it to your public IP. Uh, let me just uh, close this down here. But that at least gives you an idea of how to set up your own personal website. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.